Shamai GTA fans, I'm going to be comparing the latest Los Santos Tuners car, the Sultan RS Classic, with the Calico. So this has been known as one of the best tuners cars for racing. So this is all about racing performance, not customization. I am not Mr. Boss FTWs. Okay, let's get on with it. To begin, we're going to start off with the test track, and then we're going to go through to a drag race, and then we're going to take it through to a few races competitively. So let's do a time trial. The Sultan RS, it takes corners nicely and didn't have any problems spinning out um, whatsoever on the test track funnily enough uh, as you can see the suspension is competition and lowered now the thing is about is about the suspension is for actual racing I changed it to sports suspension because this is great for the test track and I think over sports suspension I, I had decimal two of a decimal two zero of a second faster with the um, competition suspension as as you've got here which which looks ugly anyway doesn't it let's face it so yeah I'd recommend the sports suspension we come up to the hairpin the final 360 and this is the the straight so nice handling car 56 decimal 37 easily top of the tuners so far but I've not bought a Coleco. So at this point, I've not bought one. So um, we're going to compare the Coleco next and see how that does. So it's above the S2, it's above um, everything else I've got there, with Remus, etc. So let's get the Coleco out, shall we, on uh, the Maiden Voyage. This is the best lap that I had on the Coleco. There's noticeable over understeer there, so you see it going to the corners. I'm struggling to get the uh, the crisp corners of the Coleco for sure. I'm sure you could do better over time, but I did spend a good portion of the day trying to do this. This is this is how bad I am at driving, I'm sure. But I'm trying to get the apex just right as much as I can. But overall, it, it felt good. You know, it felt solid on the road, and it wasn't spinning out on the corners, and a good solid kind of handling. Okay, so these uh, corners where you can just put your foot down is pretty good. Okay, we're into the S and come up to the 360. Uh, will you look at the understeer on that? I meant. And we cross the line at 58 decimal 26. So we're below the Comet S2 at 57 decimal 98, and the RS Classic is at 56 decimal 37. Nearly two seconds ahead. Christ, my bike. Yeah, I really need to get the handle of that uh, understeer, don't I? So let's try the stance uh, lowered, shall we? Because um, all these are stance normal, except for this one. So I'm going to show you why I've not done a best time with the stance lowered. These are obviously no normal grip tyres as well, because no grip would not be any good for racing. Look at the difference with the understeer, it is immense. People say you could use your handbrake on that, but I wasn't really a fan, to be quite honest. So it didn't go well for me, it did not work for me, for my driving style. But it might work for you. So let's try the Coleco in a race. Again, we've got competition, suspension, and it's a default rather than lowered stance. Everything is, I shouldn't have to say, but everything is upgraded to the max, turbo, etc. No cost has been spared. And here we go. We're actually up against an RS Classic there. Or two. And I think the blue guy, I was asking him, he's using sports suspension. I don't think the other one's got competition either. It's pretty, nim pretty nimble, funnily enough. Uh, the understeer was easily manageable on this course. I had no problems with it, pretty solid performance and I think the reason they're getting away from me is probably because I'm a bit more cautious with my driving. Like I said previously, it's it's been a while so I'm just gearing back up into the whole racing and which is basically me saying I'm not, not brilliant. 
but I was I was really happy with the performance and surprised as well considering the test track. Um, it's it's a good racer. It's still excellent. If you have this car, then enjoy it. It's a good it's a good racing car, the Coleco. And again, you could you could manage the understeer with a bit of a bit of handbrake perhaps and rev, but I don't know. I'd assume you'd lose a bit of speed on the corners as soon as you're making squeaky noise tight noises from the tires there you're losing speed losing it to, uh, to kinetic energy friction yeah luckily I, knew, I know this track so I know where the, um, the actual shortcuts are it takes me longer than your average person to learn tracks but overall pretty good happy with the performance here and, and, and actually I'm much happier when, with the uh, RS performance with the competition suspension because it tended to um, to slip out and, uh, and spin, getting a spin quite easily with competition suspension so it's a lot more solid than the RS with competition suspension at this point so let's try it with um, sports suspension shall we, let's go over to the RS oh why are all these races in the dark I really want to see the cars but I've not put any strip lights on mine so you can't show off that way so this is the RS, um, as I said, sports um, suspension, and I got a speed start there, look at that, it's almost as if I know what I'm doing. Alright, um, this is a track I'm not as familiar with, so notice I'm missing the shortcuts there, I'm just pretty much following other people if I can. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty solid drive, and the cornering's pretty good. I was, I was very happy happy with it so far and uh, acceleration is pretty good it's not as good as the Coleco accelerating actually how do we know that we need to have a look at some races yeah so okay we nearly spun out a little bit there but it, that wasn't too bad really that's not if I'd had, had uh, competition suspension I'd have been facing the other direction so that would have been pretty terrible but I'm sure, like I said, you can tame the beast I'm sure you could race with competition suspension if you got used to it but it's just a bit more twitchy nice corner yeah, I think if I knew the track a bit more I'd, I'd be doing some more splendid stuff in this but overall I think I'm really happy with the race performance of the RS and I'm getting used to it a bit more now so I think well, overall it's making it the more favourable car I think I think I do prefer this one to drive you know it's, it's always tough to tell you know if you don't put a, a million hours in if you put enough hours in I think either car w could be the, the best car it's it's difficult it's like it's like choosing between uh, between your children for example your babies your cats it's like choosing between your cats you know, which cat is your favourite? I don't know. They both have they both have elements to them which are great. So that's that's the RS. It's an excellent choice. Finally we have the moment you've been waiting for, the drag race. This is where the Coleco excels, but how will the RS compete with it? Both cars have competition suspension but neither have been lowered because this is meant to represent a real race you wouldn't really have lowered stance in a real race and the Coleco takes it once again half a second in front of the RS so definitely better accelerating better in the drag race so which car do you buy? well looking at the Coleco it's been number one for quite a long time in the uh, racetrack and with good reason it's a very good car it's excellent at acceleration it's got great speed and it's uh, got a confident presence on the track the track is pretty reliable the only downside is that understeer which is uh, making the cornering a bit more difficult for me and I found it difficult on the uh, test track on that smaller test track to really get the best out of the Coleco and uh, I wouldn't say that it's 
not possible that I will get better because I would get better at the Coleco with time if I have the uh, time to invest in learning to drive this a bit better than what I'm driving now but it's a solid car there's no reason to go out and replace your Coleco with an RS because I think it's a, it's a great race car still and uh, especially on the open tracks but if you're well into your racing you'd ideally want to have both cars um, and uh, if, on the other hand, you're thinking about which one do you buy, well, it's it's a tough decision to make. And uh, I would I would say overall, you you'd want to buy the one that is cheapest. Uh, is is one consideration if it's on discount. Another consideration is how you drive, whichever one suits your driving style the best. So. What about the um, the old RS and this is a new kid on the block? I hope you sleep well, tonight. well, for me, I think the RS has rejuvenated the racing scene for me. It's uh, it's just my kind of car to drive. Once you sort out the suspension and just put it on sports suspension rather than competition, it's so much more stable and I've not been spinning out um, nearly as much. I mean, not 100%. And I think that's where the Coleco wins for sure. It is more stable as as a car, but um, I think the the racing characteristics, the cornering, is much sharper, and the acceleration is still pretty good. It's still pretty a pretty fast car, so you can still win races. Even I've won a won a race in it. How amazing is that for me? Uh, it's just an easier. I think it's an easier car to get uh, to grips with. Now, I'm not saying throw your Calicos in the bin, but I'm just saying that me, as a racing pleb, finds the RS is the easier car to drive and the one that I get on best with. So, those are my concluding thoughts, really. Um, if you've found that useful, do like and subscribe. And please give me some comments on your preferred setups and if you've got any tips for me with the uh, Coleco, how to get more out of the car. Um, but overall, thank you very much for watching. I do hope this has helped you.